we're going to uh, go ahead and get started uh, with the election presentation portion of this meeting. Um, our interpreter, I think, just arrived. Uh, if anyone needs Spanish interpretation, I don't know. The interpreter, would you like to introduce yourself? Thank you. Me llamo Isabel Fierros. Si alguna persona necesita un intérprete de español, yo con mucho gusto lo, lo ayudo. Sí. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, uh, good evening, everybody. My name is uh, Ben Lane. I'm a deputy city clerk, and I'm here today to talk to you about a proposed council item related to elections. Um, currently, the city of Phoenix conducts elections for mayor and council, and also city ballot measures such as pension reform and transit items. Um, our city council is considering consolidating our elections with the county elections. So right now what we do is we hold our elections in August and November of odd numbered years and the council is considering moving those to the fall of even numbered years. Um, and I'll be talking to you about that in greater detail uh, through this presentation. Just to provide a little background on city elections. Um, the city of Phoenix is actually the second largest election jurisdiction in terms of numbers of registered voters in the state. We're behind Maricopa County, but ahead of other counties such as Pima. Also, we've been conducting our own elections, the city has since incorporation, since 1881. And we changed from spring to fall of odd years in 1949, and we've maintained that, being in the fall of odd numbered years since that time. We have 713,000 registered voters. Of those 713,000 registered voters, 70% are on the permanent early voting list. The permanent early voting list allows you to get a ballot by mail early, uh, vote that ballot at your convenience and return it, and 70% of our voters take advantage of that option. 95% of the people who vote in city elections actually vote early by mail. The other 5% vote in person at one of our voting centers. Speaking of voting centers, that's actually one of the innovations the city has done. Um, the city of Phoenix has been a leader in innovations uh, in elections in the state uh, for several years now. Uh, we were the first uh, jurisdiction to consolidate precincts. We did that in 1987. Uh, we did that because few of our voters were voting in city precincts in, in polling places, and uh, so we consolidated them to save resources. We were also the first jurisdiction to implement a permanent early voting list, once again, that allows individuals to get a ballot by mail. Um, we did that in 1997. The state implemented its own permanent early voting list uh, 10 years later in 2007. And we were also the first to develop and use voting centers. And we did that in 2011. Um, the nice thing about voting centers is that you can go to any location over a several day period. And I'll talk more about voting centers and the, benefit, the benefits it has a little bit later. So the council is considering three options. One is to maintain our current process, which is doing elections in the fall of odd numbered years. The second option is to go to an even numbered years, August, November cycle. And that would put us on the same ballot as gubernatorial elections, so elections for governor. So for example, the governor is up for election this August and November, and then two years later, the presidential elections happen. So it would put us on that same ballot with either the governor or the president. And then the final option is to go to a November-March consolidated election cycle. So the November election would actually be held in even years. So that would be the presidential election in, the, in November, for example, or the gubernatorial election in November. And then our runoff election, if one was needed, um, would be held in March of the odd years. We hold runoff elections in the city of Phoenix if no candidate gets 50% plus one, so essentially a majority of the vote, we would hold a runoff election. Now, options two and three require, would require charter amendments um, because, and the charter is essentially our city's constitution. And so the voters have to change the charter, and so there'd be several charter amendments needed for us to move to uh, even year, an even year cycle and that would be referred to the voters this fall uh, to move our elections from 2019 to 2020.
So there are three options I'll be talking about in greater detail. And um, we'll, we'll go into each one in just a minute. Um, this chart lays out basically the methods, the dates, and the cost of each option. And for each option, there are uh, definitely benefits and then things for further consideration. So the first option is to maintain our current cycle, which is election in odd-numbered years. So once again, currently the city conducts its election in August and November of odd years. Um, and uh, we, our elections are nonpartisan. We do not care about who is a Republican, who is a Democrat, who, who is a Green Party member. Um, we don't put that on our ballots. And, uh, and by doing it in odd-numbered years, we're allowed to maintain that. And also, um, we, we use a permanent early voting list for early voting. So all permanent early voting list members, including independent voters, receive a ballot. Um, some of these other options, don't, don't automa independent voters don't automatically get a ballot, and I'll go into that in more detail in just a minute. Also, we use voting centers. Um, I mentioned earlier voting centers was one of the innovations the city has. Uh, what voting centers allow you to do is, before we went to voting centers in 2011, we were using polling places. With polling places, as you know, you have to go to the one closest to your house, and that's the only one you can go to. And also, you have to do that on Election Day Tuesday. When we moved to voting centers in 2011, what we did is we reduced from 125 polling places to 27 voting centers. Now, we could do that because most of our voters vote early by mail. Um, by moving to 27 voting centers, the big benefit to voters was is you could go to any of them. You could go to any of the locations. So you could go to the one closest to your house. You could go to the one closest to your work. If you were running errands, you could go to the one near there. The other thing we did that, uh, as far as I know, no other jurisdiction in the entire country has ever done is we actually had our voting centers open for three days. So we have our voting centers open the Saturday and Monday before Election Day Tuesday. And, uh, and then that's the third day that they're open is the Election Day Tuesday. So we actually had the centers uh, open for three days. So, you know, if you had a soccer game for your kid on Saturday and want to run out and vote really quick, you could go do that. So it was a really nice benefit to voters. Um, <clears throat> so in terms of the election dates, it would once again, the, our, our general election is what we call our general election. That would be held in August of the odd numbered years. And then if a runoff was necessary, and once again, a runoff is only necessary if no one gets a majority of the votes, that would be held in November. Um, the cost to the city to conduct a voting center election is, is $1 million per election. Uh, out of these three options, that is the highest cost. The second option I'd like to talk to you all about is moving to even numbered years. Um, for August and November. Um, the county would conduct these elections. Um, we would put our items on the county ballot in August and November of the even years. Now, there is a, a, a concern for people voters who are independents in August. Um, and that's because if you're an independent voter, so in other words, if you don't have a party designated, if you haven't chosen to be a Republican or Democrat or a Green Party member, uh, if you're an independent voter in August of even numbered years, you have to tell the county what ballot you want, that either you want the Republican ballot or the Democratic ballot or the Green Party ballot, uh, the Libertarian ballot, whatever ballot you want, or if you only want the city only ballot, which would, for us, it would be only our city elections. You have to make that choice. Um, that's not an issue for November because everyone gets the same ballot in November. Additionally, polling places are used by the county. Um, so once again, with a polling place, you have to vote at the location that is closest to your home. And they're only open for one day, that, that day being Election Day Tuesday. Um, the dates, once again, would be August and November of even numbered years. And um, the cost, however, is the lowest of the three options. Um, the cost to put our items on the county ballot is $500,000 um, per election. So it's definitely the lowest cost of the three options. <clears throat> um, additionally, uh, one other thing to consider is um, with, uh, with odd numbered year elections, uh, you can normally have multiple ballot measures on the ballot because we have room. When you put an item on the county ballot in August and November, 
Uh, normally in August, you can fit between four to six ballot measures, and in November, uh, two to three ballot measures. Um, so there is a space limitation when you uh, join with a county ballot. Just talking a little bit more about that independent voter issue that I mentioned earlier. So as you can see from this chart, um, for Maricopa County in the primary election in August 2016, um, there were over 400,000 voters on the countywide um, that were independent voters, and they were sent a notice. And they, the notice said basically choose a ballot style. So you could either choose uh, a part, you could choose a party ballot style for that one, or if your city was on the ballot, you could choose a city only ballot. Um, in terms of the number of voters that were mailed a ballot, so in ter that means the voters responded and said, I want this ballot style. Uh, it was only about 15% of the voters that responded. And in 2014, it was almost 400,000 voters and almost 19% responded. In city of Phoenix elections, when we conduct our own elections, because everyone gets the same ballot, everyone gets a ballot automatically for that, that, uh, that election, so it's not an issue when the city conducts the election. In terms of the voter turnout, so the orange columns, at least that, that looks orange to me, the orange columns, are those are elections conducted by the city. The green columns are elections conducted by the county. And as you can see by the chart, basically the, the turnout is the same. The turnout in city elections in August is, is, a, is around the mid-20s, and the turnout in county elections in August is also around the mid 20s so there's not a great deal of difference between city city conducted elections and county conducted elections in august and, and once again we, we feel the reason why that is is just because basically items you know items and candidates turn out voters so you see a big difference in november when people are voting for president or when people are voting for governor um, you see a, a higher turnout in november um, because of the, the people consideration with independent voters and because the turnout was approximately the same in August between the city and county, the council considered a third option. And that was moving to a November-March uh, cycle. Um, so the county would conduct the city election in November and if there was a runoff needed, so once again, if, if a candidate didn't get a majority of the vote, the city would actually conduct the runoff election in March. Um, that, that people issue that I mentioned earlier, it would not be an issue uh, because in November, everyone gets a ballot. It's the same ballot that everyone gets. And in March, everyone would get the same ballot as well. And as I mentioned earlier, and as we'll see in just a minute through another chart, November is definitely the highest turnout among the four consolidated election dates. Uh, Per state law, we can hold elections on four dates. It's March, May, August, and November. Uh, but out of the four dates, November is definitely the highest of the four. Uh, we would use polling places in November. We'd be on, once again, we'd be on the county ballot and use polling places. We use voting centers in March. And, and once again, in terms of dates, no, it would be November of the even years and then March of the odd years if a runoff was needed. Um, so the March cost, once again, is very low. Um, it's approximately five hundred thousand uh, dollars for the I'm sorry for the November cost the March cost the reason why the city is conducting the runoff is because on a non consolidated date the city can conduct an election cheaper than the county because of some of the efficiencies we've made so if the county were to conduct the election in March it would be somewhere around 1.7 to 2 million dollars if the city conducts the election in March it would be 1 million dollars so that's why the the council said have the city conduct the runoff election if, if it's needed. So I mentioned earlier that the, the turnout varies greatly when the county conducts the election in, in November. So once again, the, the orange uh, graphs are, are city elections and the green, green bar charts are county. And so you can see when it's a presidential election and that first green bar chart is a presidential election in uh, 2012, that was 74% turnout, so it was an extremely high turnout. Our comparable uh, city election, uh, which was in 2011, was only 28%. And um, in 2014, um, that was a gubernatorial, that was an election for governor. That turnout was a little bit lower, it was 43%. 
but it was still higher than the comparable city turnout, which was around 23%. Um, in 2015 of November, we did not have a runoff election. Once again, we only hold a runoff election if someone does not get a majority of the vote. All the candidates that were running in, um, in, uh, in 2013, um, got, I'm sorry, in 2015 got a majority of the vote in August, so a runoff wasn't needed. And uh, however, you can see that the, runoff, the, the November general election for the presidential election was around 70% in 2016. So once again, a very, very high turnout. So if the council decides to, to put the me measure towards to the ballot and ask the voters whether to move to uh, either August or November of even years or November and March of, uh, of no, November of even years and March of odd years, uh, that will require charter amendments. So once again, that will be requirements uh, put to the voters to change our constitution. Some of those charter amendments would include when terms begin and also the dates of the election as well, changing those two things would be some of the charter amendments put forward to the voters. And those charter amendments, uh, if the council so chooses, would be on the ballot this fall, either in August or November. With that, I'd be happy to answer any questions or, or take any feedback you all might have. And I, I thank you for your time. And I, I think um, if you don't mind, if, uh, if you have a question, if you can come up to the microphone. So, or I can, yeah, I can actually, let me walk over there. It's just so they, they're, they're filming this, and it, it uh, yeah. Huh? Channel, okay, yeah. Sorry. I, I just wondered if the city, for the amendment to pass, or the charter, charter change, does a, does a certain amount of the city voters have to vote? Yeah, so that was a great question. So the question was, um, if for the charter amendments to, to pass, the, the, does it require a certain number of, of voters? So yeah, it would require a majority of the voters to approve it. So you'd have to have at least 50% plus one. Uh, so a majority of the voters would have to say, yes, this is a, we want this charter change to, 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 to have it pass. Otherwise it would fail and we would stay in our current model. No. Good question. So the question was, um, is it 50% of the registered voters or the people who vote? It's 50% of the people who vote in that election. Uh, great question. Any, any other questions? Okay. And the, the question was, when would the election be? Um, the election would be either in August or November of this year. Uh, we would actually put the item on the county ballot to, uh, to have the, the, the voters vote on that. Any other questions? Okay. Oh, I'll, I'll be around if anyone has any other questions. Um, I, I think actually this was our largest attendance. So that's great. So thank you all very much. Uh, we really appreciate it. <laughs> uh, Y'all have a nice evening. Thank you very much.